Welcome to Relocating to Disney. Today, we are at the Kennedy Space Center here in Cape Canaveral. And uh, it's about an hour away from Orlando. Um, and we're looking forward to going on in and seeing what there is to see. All right, now we're headed to the bus tours. So the bus ride brings you out to the Apollo Saturn Center. It's a nice drive. You get to see uh, some different uh, locations around um, NASA, including the Assembly Center and off the distance some uh, the launch sites and uh, the rover that brings the rockets out. But once you're uh, at the destination, you get off the bus and then you can go in and see the Apollo and uh, Saturn area. amongst the stars since the dawn of humankind. We've looked at the stars with wonder and amazement, their glow guiding our travel for centuries. The more we learn about our universe, the more questions we have. I'm Emily Calandrelli, and today you'll be following me behind the gates on this exclusive bus tour of Kennedy Space Center. Our journey will take us past active facilities and end at the visitor complex's own Apollo Saturn V Center. But before we begin this journey, just like every NASA mission, our number one goal is to stone rocket. It represents NASA's earliest efforts to send humans into space. These redstone rockets were formerly ballistic missiles provided to NASA by the U.S. Army. In October of 1958, NASA formally organized Project Mercury with the mission to investigate man's reaction to this new environment and safely recover the capsule and its pilot. Man rating for human spaceflight on what was previously a ballistic missile was no easy task. After several modifications and test flights, a Mercury capsule carrying ham, a chimpanzee, was successfully launched and recovered on January 31st, 1961. Where NASA astronauts have ventured forth on flights of exploration. It is one of the largest buildings in the world by volume, and is the place where NASA completes the final assembly of its rockets before launch. The sheer scale of this building is hard to grasp, even when you're right next to it. Do you ever feel really small when you think about space? What about when you're standing next to a skyscraper or a really big bridge? Well, I feel about as small as an ant right now. I'm standing inside the vehicle assembly building trying to grasp how large it really is in here. It has four bays. Each bay has two large horizontal doors below it and seven smaller vertically opening doors above it, tall enough to fit the world's largest rocket through. In fact, these are the largest doors in the world. Construction of the VAB required 65,000 cubic yards of concrete, 45,000 steel beams, 1 million steel bolts amounting to almost 100 thousand tons of steam. But the crew will be before they're in the spacecraft and headed to space. Now the wave room provides a contamination free environment up next to the spacecraft and as you suspect it's white. It's the white room. Thanks then. All right guys we're coming up on the most cafeteria. That's the cafeteria folks. Oh. Yeah the cafeteria. Out the left front corner of the bus, you'll see the actual access arm off of 39A. All the shuttle astronauts walked in through that arm to get into their uh, orbiter. There's the white room that the video was talking about. The last place on Earth that the uh, astronauts would be before they loaded into the space track. The VAB, the largest single story building by volume in the world, 525 feet tall, and sits on the extent to launch 135 shuttle missions. 39A is now set up for SpaceX, and 39B, well, that's where uh, NASA will be launching that space launch system from. That's the large launch device. It's bad. 
Look out the right front corner of the bus, the tall black tower next to the water tower. That's 39A. That's on the look in the rock here, you can see the trend mark. Well, that crawler does not go up one side and down the other, folks. So the mobile launch platform's in there with the rocket tower and rocket on top of it. We're getting it ready for the first test flight, which is going to be by the end of August. That's the rocket that's going to take us to the moon and then to Mars. It's sand that can support all the weight. And then once we're there, we'll drop it all off. And a few days later, there'll be a launch. We'll come back, we'll pick the mobile launcher up, and we'll bring it back to the VAB to start the project. To carry that space launch system out to the launch pad. Largest track vehicle ever built. It has eight sets of tracks, each set larger than the bus. Each set has 57 cleats, and each cleat weighs one ton. Driver's compartment in the front right. There's also one in the back left. You don't turn that thing around, folks. You just climb around to the other end and drive it back the way it came from. All right, next we're headed into the Apollo part of the tour. So we're going to go check that out. Their way forward. Again, when we actually did send men into space, it turned out that those were exactly the qualities it took. I'm John Hudson. This is Pad 39 of the Kennedy Space Center. I was a launch controller here when, from this very spot, man took off to fly to the moon. The tragedy of Apollo 1 had put us a year and a half behind. We were making up for it in one big leap. And we were doing it with a rocket that no man... Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. It is one of those rare moments when history is not being made. Destiny is being... Moon Rock Cafe, hamburgers, hot dogs, chicken fingers, pizza, and uh, some beer. The Apollo Saturn Center was fun. Now we're getting back on the bus to uh, head back to the main complex. Yeah. All right, that's the end of our trip to the Kennedy Space Center for today. Thank you for joining us and thank you for watching.